Thank you, Lord, for mercy. Thank you, Lord, for grace. We thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We are grateful, O oh God. Not just you spared our lives today and we are grateful, but Lord, you've given us eternal life. We thank you for that gift, O oh God. Thank you for the gift of life tonight. We are grateful to you, Abba Father. Oh, we bless your name today, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, hallelujah. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises unto your name. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks tonight. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness, your compassion, your love towards us, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name tonight. We come boldly into your presence. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Let's give thanks tonight for the blood of Jesus. If not for the blood, we would have still been in our sins. So we thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, the only begotten of the Father, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we thank you. Thank you tonight for forgiveness of our sins by the blood of Jesus. Oh, we thank you tonight for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we have healing through the blood of Jesus. We have victory through the blood of Jesus. We have forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that no other blood was able to cleanse us. The blood of bulls and goats was not good enough, O oh God. And so you sent your only son. And we appreciate that gift tonight. We appreciate the gift of Jesus and his blood tonight. Oh, we thank you. Even in the season, Lord, of resurrection, even in the season, Father, we extend our gratitude tonight. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you for he knew no sin, but Lord, you made him to become sin for us. You made him to be sin. And we thank you, Lord. You made Jesus to take our place. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful tonight. He knew no sin. Yet, oh God, you made him to be sin for us. That we, oh God, might be called the righteousness of God. Thank you tonight. You have called us your righteousness. Oh, we bless your name. We bless you tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you for the free gifts of life. Thank you for this gift of grace, oh God. We appreciate your gifts tonight. In the name of Jesus, oh, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this gift of grace. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Papa God. We appreciate you. Oh, we say bless the Lord our souls. 
Bless the Lord our souls, all that is inside of us. Bless your holy name. Bless the Lord our souls. And may we never forget all his benefits. Tonight, oh God, we begin to recall all your benefits towards us. Oh, we thank you. Let's just thank God for his benefits. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord our souls. And never forget, never forget his benefits. We thank you for the benefits you've given us, Lord Jesus. The forgiveness of our sins. Thank you. Thank you. The forgiveness of our sins. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for that benefit we have in Christ Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. We're going straight into the world because I see we probably are getting up. So, straight into the world now. Alright? Deuteronomy chapter 7. We are going to understand something. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7. And if we don't know, we'll know tonight. And if we knew, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy 7. Uh, Richard, take it from 1 to 5 for us, please. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Gergeshites and the Amorites and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their carved images with fire. This is the word of the Lord. So you see, my message is tied up with what was prophesied. All right? Take heed. You who have ears to hear, let him hear. You who have eyes to see, let him see for himself. The Lord has spoken. But something we must understand. We must understand something that verse 6 says. For you are a holy, a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people, a special. Let's take it again. For you are a holy people to the to holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for Himself. All right? So, we were chosen to the Lord for himself. Listen to this. As special treasures above all the peoples on the face of the earth. All right? So, we are chosen. Now, we are holy people. Remember that. We are holy people chosen by the Lord our God for himself. All right? Listen to this. The Lord did not set his love on you not choose you because <clears throat> you were more numer numer no, numer you were more in number sorry number than any other people for you were the least of all peoples but because the lord loves you the lord loves you and because he would keep the oak which he so to your fathers the lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of pharaoh king of egypt bro you said it earlier when the lord returned ensure that nobody stays here ensure that nobody stays here ensure if you do not want to be taken out from the house of bondage, 
from the place of bondage where lawlessness will abound. Kwapo will smoke your behind. Kwapo will smoke your bumper. I warn you all you. He will smoke your bumper. You know when the vehicle is smoking, it's from the back. It's from the back. So your bumper will be smoking. Therefore, know that the Lord, your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Right now, the most important thing here for us now, as Christians, knowing what is to come and knowing what we are going to be faced with, knowing what we are going to be faced with and what is coming, the most important thing for us today is to keep the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is to keep the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we were chosen. We are a chosen people. Remember that. We are a chosen people. So we are not like the others. We are a chosen people. So when whatever comes, we know exactly where to flee. We have our Mon denial and Goshen. So we are not going to stay in their midst. We are not going to do that. Now let's continue. Let's continue. Now we stop verse 10. And he verse 10. Listen. And he repairs. Those who hate him to their face to destroy them. Period. The word of God declares that the wicked will be cut off forever. He said he will pay those who hate who. Those who hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments, the statutes, and the judgment which I command you when? You when? Today. Today. And today to observe them. Remember what he said to Joshua in the book of Joshua. Remember what he said to Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and to observe what is and to do according to what is written in it. And he said, therefore, then you will have good what? And then you will have prosperous. You'll make your way prosperous. So, we must keep the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must keep it. If we do not keep the commandments of Jesus, what is coming, what is coming will take us by surprise because we will be unaware of what is to come. So we will be living our lives and living it to the fullest. We will be living our lives and living it to the fullest. And then knowing that we are unaware because we are enjoying our lives to the fullest. And then when these things come to pass, then you will be taken by surprise. I pray that we do not be taken by surprise in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's my prayer. That's my declaration in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, verse 11, you shall keep the commandment, the statute, and the judgment which I command you today. Now, they say the Old Testament is not for us. Alright? They say the Old Testament is not for us. They abolish. So, is the New Testament we should focus on today. Alright? 
simply because they do not want to keep the commandments of Jesus. That's why they do not want to keep his commandments. So they abolish the Old Testament. It is not for us today. And they are giving emphasis on the New Testament. We see, we, let's see what happens. Deuteronomy chapter 7, we're going to verse 12. Not forgetting, my dear people, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you. He has chosen us to be a people for himself. Special treasures above all the people of the face of the earth. So we know who we are. We know who we are. All right. Thank you. Jesus. Verse 12. Then it shall come to pass. Because you listen to this judgment and keep and to do them that the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he sold with your God love that. You see, in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, the same chapter 2, I think somewhere in verse 16 somewhere, he said, I hate divorce. When he make that covenant with his children, he does not break that covenant. He does not break that covenant. So he loves keeping the, com the, com the, the covenant with his children. We continue. We continue. Verse 13. And he will love you and bless you. You hear that? For he will love you and bless you and multiply you. Now for all these things to take place, you must keep his commandments. For all of these things to take place, you must keep the commandments of Jesus. You want to be blessed? You must keep his commandments. It's very important. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also, listen, he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land. Your grain and your new wine and your oil. The increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock. In the land of which you sow to your fathers to give you. No, listen to this children of God. It's very important. Listen to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's important. We must keep the commandments of Jesus if we say we love him. If we say we love him, we must keep his commandments. We must do what he says to do. That is to prove our love to him. That is to prove our love for him because he has proven his love for mankind. He has proven his love for mankind. For God so loved the world. He did not just only say that. He has proven his love. He has given himself as a sacrifice for man. That is to prove the man that he loved them to the degree of death. He loved them unto death. So to prove our love to Jesus, we must obey his commandments. We must obey his commandments. And if we stand there and we sit there today and we say, well, this new old um, um, testament is not for us. It's simply because you do not want to keep the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Simply because you do not want to keep the commandments of Jesus. And if you do not want to keep the commandments of Jesus, then you will keep the commandments of those LGBTQ, ABCDEA, whatever. You will keep it. And your bumper will smoke. Your bumper will smoke and it will burn. It will burn. Keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. Verse 13 is very, very interesting. It is very interesting. Verse 13. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. 
And he will also bless the fruit of your womb. Women that are barren. Women that are barren. Your womb will be blessed. Obey the commandments of Jesus. Obey the commandments of Jesus that your bumper do not get fire. We are warning you. We are warning you. We are warning you. We must be humble. I say we must be humble. We must be humble. Not pray, not seeking God's face. And turn away from wicked ways. If we are not humble, it means that we are wicked. We must be humble. Turn away from our wicked ways. And obey the commandments of Jesus. If you want to be blessed, you must be humble. If you want to bear fruit, you must be humble. That you will obey the commandments of Jesus Christ. You must. He said he will bless you. And he will multiply. Don't you want to be multiplied? Don't you want to be multiplied? Of course. Of course. Of course. He will multiply you. How we expect God to hear us. If we do not keep his commandments. How we expect us. To heal our land. How we expect us to. to, to how, he, how we expect God to, to, to heal our land. If we are not obedient to his commandments. We must be obedient. To the commandments. Of Jesus. Because we are living. In perilous times. The commandment which he has commanded us. Not yesterday but today. Today, and this is why many are there saying that the Old Testament is not for us. The Old Testament is not for us. So we will get confirmation from the New Testament. We will get confirmation from the New Testament that the Old Testament is for us. Because the old was there before the new. We must understand it. The old was there before the new. But I'm asking myself, if the old was there before the new, what were they doing before? Were they not obeying the Old Testament and or abiding with the Old Testament? Why is it today the Old Testament is not for us? Why? When the, Lord, the word of the Lord our God surely declared to us that we must obey his commandments, his statutes and his judgments. We must be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ, and also respectful to him. We miss that one, respectful. We must be respectful to the Lord. <clears throat> and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. And he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land. He who called by my name and seek my face, and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then I will hear from heaven, and then I will forgive them their sins, and I will heal their land. He who is called by my name, who is he talking about? Who is the Lord talking about? He's talking about us. He's talking about us. Are we not the ones who cry out to the Lord? Who is us? He's speaking about us. He's speaking to us. And many times what you find is that the children of God get themselves entangled with the things of the world. All because of what? Selfishness. All because of what? Greed. Greed. Every man wants to look for himself. Every man wants to look for himself. And do not look for the welfare of the others. Every man wants to look for himself. Verse 14 says, You shall be blessed above all people. 
Remember what it says there in verse um, in chapter six. Chapter six. All right. Chapter six says for, for chapter six says for you are a holy people to God. Let's take it again. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for Himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Now, verse 14 says here, you shall be blessed above all peoples. Above all peoples. That's what it says. Alright? And listen to this. All peoples, there shall not be a male or female. Now notice he said male and female. He didn't say male and male. No female and female. So those people that come in with their male and male and female and female, we must understand and we must let them know that our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned male and female. So wherever they get their male and male and female and female, they must go in their separate place. Find their place for their male and male and female and female. And we find ourselves where our Lord Jesus Christ has made the male and female. So let's continue. You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall be not a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. We are blessed. I say we are blessed. You know why we are blessed? Because we are chosen by the Lord. We are chosen. We are special. In the name of Jesus. We are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 15 says, And the Lord will take away from you all sickness. Did he say half sickness? He said he will take away from you all sickness and with afflicted and afflict you with none of the trouble, disease of Egypt, which you have none, but will lay them on all those who hate you. So everyone that hates you, the sickness and the afflict he's talking about, he will place it on everyone that hate us. He will place it on everyone that hate us. Why? Because he has chosen us above all other people. And he has placed us above every other people on the face of the earth. That says that we are holy people. We are royal priesthood. We are above all other people on the face of the earth. Alright? On the face of the earth. It means that we are special. And it mentioned in verse 6. We are special. And if we are special, well, we must behave like special people. We must move like special people. We must act like special people. We must speak like special people. We must do these things like special people. We must. Indeed, we are special. So we must prove our speciality or what he has proven us he has chosen us to be. We must go out there and prove to everyone that he has chosen us over. We must go out there and prove to them that we are special. And indeed, we are special. Indeed. Indeed, we are special. No dog back. No dog back. We are special. It is sealed. It's a done deal that it is special. Why? We are special because the Lord has chosen us. He has chosen us above all other people of the face of the earth. So that makes us special. That's where he had the word special. That's where the word special came in. So we are special. So don't allow them to talk to us how, we, how they want. We must let them understand that we are special. Don't allow them to come and try to wipe their foot on you. We are special. We are special. 
They must bow to us. Why? We are special. They must recognize us because we are special. We are not at their level, a matter of fact. In other words, we are not at their level. We are at a different level which they cannot reach and will not reach that level because the Lord of God has already chosen us. He has already chosen his people. So those whom he has chosen is on a different level. We are on a different level. Let's remain on that level in the name of Jesus. I say let's remain on that level in the name of Jesus. Because we are special. We are special. And when they start talking about you, let them understand that I am special. I was chosen above you. We must tell them. We must tell them because we are living in perilous times. We know that we are living in perilous times. They don't know. They are unaware that we are living in perilous times. But we know. We know. We know that we are living in perilous times. So let them say that the Old Testament is not for us. The Old Testament is not for us. So let them stay with their Old Testament. And let them die and go to hell. But before they die and go to hell, let them smoke their bumper, their bumper for them. Let them smoke their bumper. And they will smoke it good. They will smoke that bumper good before they die and go to hell. Deuteronomy 28. Don't be afraid, children of God. How can you be afraid of a man who will die? Don't be afraid. Deuteronomy 28. Thank you, Jesus, for eye opening. Thank you for prophecy. Are we all there? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully. That's very important again. You see how we add the word special before he described us? Carefully to observe carefully let's not forget that word carefully all his commandments which i command you when today today let's not forget that because what we do not want is that we keep nine of his commandments and we leave one and say that we are obedient obedient to the commandments of jesus if we obey nine and we dishonor one, we do obey everything. All. We disobey all. All right? We disobey all. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you Hallelujah. Listen to this. He will set you high above all nations of the earth. So, why does people that say the Old Testament is not for us? We can challenge them tonight. We can challenge them tonight. We are challenging you tonight. If you say the Old Testament is not for us today, you are a sinner. You need to get, get out, of, out of sin. You are a big time sinner and you need to get out of unrighteousness. You need to obey the commandments, all of the commandments of Jesus. And if you obey nine and dishonor one, you dishonor all. So we are challenging you today. You who say that the Old Testament is not for us today. We challenge you today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now it shall come to pass if you 
diligently. Listen to that. You who said it, Old Testament is not for us. This is your problem. You are not diligent in obeying the commandments of Jesus. You are not diligent. But he's saying that if you are diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully, so take your time, mister. You who say the Old Testament is not for us, take your time. Take your time. We know your bumper will smoke. Take your time and observe that carefully before your bumper starts smoking. In due time, we are warning you. Carefully, all his commandments, which I command you today. I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And not just that. And blessed, listen, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now I know why they say in the Old Testament is not for them. No. No, I know why. No, I know why. Take a look at us. We are blessed in the name of Jesus. We are so blessed until the blessing is overtaking us. But they are, they are at, at a place where they cannot make one step forward because they are cursed. They are not blessed. They are not blessed. No, I know why. They are not blessed. But we are blessed because the Lord has placed us above the nations because we are chosen people. We are chosen people. We are special. So we cannot be at the same level. We must be at a different level. And we must remain on that level and look to be elevated not to go down. Not to come down. But to be elevated. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Verse 30, verse 3, sorry. Verse 3 said, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. That's why you don't see them blessed. In the city, they are cursed. In the country, they are cursed. So the Old Testament is not for us. That's what they're saying. But we are blessed because the Old Testament is for us. We honor the Old Testament. We honor every scripture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because life and death is placed right here. Good and bad is placed right here. So the Old Testament, we will honor it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herbs, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring, the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kindle bowl. Listen. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Now, when they go out, they are not blessed. So, if they are not blessed when they go out, when they come in, they cannot come in blessed. They cannot return blessed because they have left cursed. So, it will be impossible for them to return blessed. But blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Listen to this. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. And it is happening. It is happening, my dear brothers and sisters. It is happening. They come one way, they flee seven ways. It is happening. We must keep all of the commandments 
of Jesus. And also, let's be careful to observe every one of his commandments which he has commanded us today. Every one of the commandments that he has commanded us today, we must be careful, carefully observe every one that he has commanded us today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that we honored the Old Testament. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen to this verse. We had verse um, 8. The Lord will command. Let's take it again. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouse. Where is his storehouse? He said, bring the tithe and offerings where? His storehouse. So where is his storehouse? Where is his storehouse? Wait a while now. All you want, are, all you want some bumbles to smoke them man. Where is the storehouse of God? In the house of God. But of course. Of course. When a question has been asked, he must answer. He must answer. If he say, bring the tithe and offerings to my storehouse. Where is the Lord's storehouse? It's, it's here. It's here. So we must bring the offerings to his storehouse. Now he says here, the Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses. Your storehouses. And in all to which you set your hands. That's why many people, before they touch something, that thing dead. That thing dead. And before, and many before you touch something, is life. Is life. You see it. He will set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is given you. Verse 9. The Lord will establish you as a holy people. As a holy people to himself. Just as he has sold to you if you keep the commandments, you see how many times he has to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So there are ways that we need to walk. Not any way we need to walk. It's not any way we need to walk as children of God. We must walk in according to his ways. According to his ways. God and walk in his ways, then, listen to this, all the people of the earth shall see you are called by my name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Imagine, the people who look down on you will look up to you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Those who look down on us will look up to us tomorrow. Why? Because the Lord has chosen us to be a holy people for him. He has chosen us. So those who seek our demise, those who call for our, our arrest, those who say, burst our head, tomorrow they will bow to us. Tomorrow they will run to us. When they cannot see us, they will track our footprints. Even the footprints, they will track just to bow to us. Just to bow to us. Verse 10 says, Then all the peoples of the earth shall see you, shall see that you are called by my name of the Lord. We are called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you. Why are you afraid of them? Are you afraid? Children of God, are you afraid? Are you afraid, children of God? Of course not. Of course not. We should never be afraid. We should never be afraid. Why? Because we are chosen. We are chosen. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. We are the few that are chosen. And we thank God for that. I said, we thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, every time... 
I just visualizing people just walking up up there. And when I tell you people, it's like people cannot move because the crowd so thick coming up. And people moving and they're walking up. I always visualizing that. Why? Why? Because this ministry is a chosen ministry. It's not just an ordinary ministry. It's a chosen ministry. And every person that comes in here testifies of the goodness of God. Everyone that visited here for the first time, one word, the word here is different. The teaching here is different. One word. I tell you they will bow. Those who looked down on you yesterday, tomorrow will bow to you. Will bow to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They will begin to begin to bow to you. Those who never respect you yesterday, they will respect you tomorrow. They will respect you tomorrow. Those who never ever respected you yesterday, tomorrow, they will respect you in the name of Jesus. They will look to you. They will run just to say, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. They will look just to bow. To show the respect for you. They will. Because yesterday they looked down on you. And today you are placed above every nation and every people of the face of the earth. So that leaves them with no choice than to bow to you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, mister. Good morning. They will bow. They will bow. They will bow to you. For so many years, they have been disrespectful to you. So many years, they have been disrespectful to you. So many years. Those that never appreciate you, tomorrow will appreciate you for who you are. They will appreciate you for who you are. Tomorrow, tomorrow, those that never appreciate you, they will appreciate you for who you are tomorrow. Hallelujah. They will. They will. And it's coming. It's coming. We are not like them because we are placed above them. We are placed above them. We were chosen to be placed above them. So we are not on the same rank. We are not on the same rank. Eh, our officer? Is not every officer at your rank. Everyone that below you have to come and say, Good morning, sir. And good afternoon, sir. They must bow. Yeah. All right. So you are not on the same level. We are not of the same rank. We are at a higher rank that they must bow. They must acknowledge that we are above them. They must. Why? Why? Because we were chosen. We were chosen. Now, this can only happen if we only keep the commandments of God. Only if we keep it and observe it carefully to do them. It can only happen. So just, don't just sit here and say, oh, yeah, I am chosen and, and, and you are not obedient to the commandments of God. Don't. You are making a mistake. Or you are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Don't be deceived. They will appreciate you for who you are. Yes, they will. They will be a blessing to you even you did not ask. They will keep blessing you even if you never ask. It's because they acknowledge you for who you are. Because you are at, at a higher rank. They will be blessing you every area of your life. Blessings upon blessings. Blessings upon blessings. They will bless us in the name of Jesus. Those who never appreciate us yesterday, today, they are saying good morning, sir, and good afternoon, sir. Why? Because we were chosen and we were placed above them. 
And they recognize that. They recognize it. They track our footprints to try to destroy us. They tried. And in every way they came, they failed miserably. They failed miserably. They failed. They failed. Had they triumphed over us, we would not have been here today. I say we would not have been here today. It's because we were chosen we are here today in the name of Jesus. It's because we were placed above them we are here today in the name of Jesus. We are here today. And it's because we are blessed. We are blessed in our going out and our coming in. We are blessed. In the fruit of our womb, your womb, you ladies, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Your livestock, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. And that's what they recognize now. They never appreciated you yesterday. They never respect you yesterday. Today, they greet you with honor and respect. Today, they run to you, even if you didn't see them, but they run to you to ensure that you see them. Just to say hello to you today. We are chosen. We are a chosen generation. He has chosen us all for himself. That's Jesus. All for himself. It's all for himself. Because we have honored every scripture in his word. We have honored every one of them. Whether good or bad. Because some speaks good and some speaks bad that we can stay away and be aware. And be aware. We thank God today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine, imagine you who doesn't know where the next meal or where the next phone is coming out to pay the bill. And all of a sudden, the one that tried to destroy you yesterday, the one that had no regard for you yesterday, the one that disrespected you yesterday and tried to turn a, a whole community against you, today is looking to pay that bill for you. Is looking to pay that bill for you tomorrow. Let's be aware of it. Let's be aware of it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, verse 12. Hallelujah. We have so much more to read in 28, but because of time. Because of time. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. So, they say the Old Testament is not for us today. And you know, today, many argue that many argue that today that the old testament is not for us uh, is not for us today that the old testament abolish so let's see what the new testament has in the book of matthew chapter 5 we take it from verse 1 all right we take it from verse 1 and seeing the multitudes he went up on the mountain and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Listen. They say that the Old Testament is not for us. But we are getting confirmation in the New Testament. Because in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, 
He says, Blessed shall you be in your womb and in your livestock. That's what he says. So if they say in the Old Testament is not for us, then what is the New Testament saying? What is the New Testament saying? The Old Testament says, Blessed shall you be when you're coming in and when you're going out. That's what it says. But what is the New Testament saying? It is still saying that, it is still saying that, Blessed said are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We're talking about blessings. We're talking about blessings. All right? No, not blessings in St. Joe. All right? Not the blessings in St. Joe. But we're talking about the blessings from our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Now, verse 5 says, Blessed are, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. They shall inherit the earth. Be blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We are a chosen people. We must inherit the earth because we are blessed. We are blessed. So I don't know where they get that saying that the, new, the Old Testament is not for us. I respect wind. Be obedient and respectful. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for f who hungry, who hunger and first for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Everyone we say today, the Old Testament is not for us. They are not first for righteousness. They are not first for righteousness, so they cannot be blessed. They cannot be blessed because their first is not for righteousness. Their first is for LGBTQ, ABCD, EFG, and their bumper to be smoked. And their bumper to be smoked. Mark my words. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's why many of them, they are not filled, because they are not hunger for righteousness. Their hunger is not for righteousness, so they cannot be filled. They cannot be filled, so it leaves them with no choice than to say the Old Testament is not for us today. It is not for us today. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. <laughs> you know that's a problem for them. <laughs> you know that's a problem for them. They know they're not going to see God already. They know they're not going to see God already. So they say the Old Testament is not for us today. Because they already know they're not going to see God. Because they are not hungry for righteousness. They are not hungry for righteousness that they could be filled. So they are saying that the Old Testament is not for us today. That's what they are saying. That's what they are saying. But we are putting them to shame today. We are putting them to shame today in Jesus' name. Blessed, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Your heart is not pure. You who say the Old Testament is not for us today. Your heart is not pure. And you know you will not see God. Repent. In the name of Jesus. Repent. And be hungry for righteousness. That you will be filled. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know they cannot see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall call sons of God. They know they are not called the sons of God. They know that. That's why they are saying the Old Testament is not for us today. Now we understand why they are saying the Old Testament is not for us. It's because of the many blessings. They are not in the brackets or they are not in the category to receive the many blessings that we are blessed with today. They are not. They are not in that bracket. They are in a different bracket. We are in a bracket above and they are in a bracket beneath. 
They are in a bracket beneath. So it leaves them with no choice than to say the Old Testament is not for us today. They try to throw it under the bus that we would be ashamed. But we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed not because we say we are blessed. Because God said we are blessed. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's another thing they're afraid of. They're afraid of persecution. They're afraid of persecution. So, the Old Testament is not for us today because of the persecution that they must face. They're afraid of it. They're afraid of it. But we cannot be afraid because we expect persecution. We expect that. We expect at one point that we would end up in, we would be in prison. We should expect this thing that one point in time, one point in, 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 in our time, in our life, we expect to be put in prison. For what? For the sake of the gospel. We expect to be persecuted. If Jesus himself went through it, he was persecuted. He left us an example that we must walk in his steps. We must walk in his ways. We must. And if we do not want to face persecution today, then we can simply say the Old Testament is not for us because we do not want to face it. We do not want to face it. So we can simply say the Old Testament is not for us today. But we must prove our love to God. We must prove our love to God and carefully observe all his commandments that he has commanded us today to observe them and to do it in the name of Jesus. We must. We must. If we are a chosen people, if we are a chosen generation, we must obey the commandments of Jesus Christ. Verse 11. Blessed are you. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kind of evil <laughs> boy, evil against you falsely for my sake. We have seen it. We have heard it. We have seen it. We have heard it. At one point, listen, at one point, when they see they could not destroy us, guess what they do? They start saying all kinds of things about us. They started accusing us. They started accusing us. We know it. We know they started accusing us. We know it. We know it. And it's because the three of us started in the time of Revive the Heart Ministries. So oftentimes, they see the three of us on the streets. So the three of us, we were accused. They say all kinds of evil things about us. They come up with buggery. One. They say, come up with one taking his family. Two. They come up with one, this one pregnant, another one. They say so much evil things falsely against us. Today, they are saying, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Today. Today. Those who try to destroy you yesterday, I say today they will bless you in the name of Jesus. Those that try to destroy you yesterday will bless you today in the name of Jesus. Those that disrespected you yesterday will honor you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. They will honor you. We'll honor you. That's why we must not bring down ourselves to their level. We must not. Let's not bring ourselves down to their level because we are not at their level. We are at a different level and they have recognized that. They have recognized that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 11 again. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you 
and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Not for the sake of man. Not for man's sake. For the sake of Christ Jesus. Verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Listen to this. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who will be for you. The prophets who will be for us, they persecute. We should be preparing for persecution. We should be preparing for persecution. For what the Lord has revealed to us. And then we got confirmation. We saw the, fil the film. We saw the film. We got confirmation. We got confirmation. It's confirmation. Thank you, Jesus. Persecution must come. Take it or leave it. Like it or not. Take it or leave it. Like it or not. Everyone who call themselves a Christian, a son, a daughter of the Most High God, prepare to be persecuted for his sake. Prepare to be persecuted for his sake. Be aware to be persecuted for his sake. But re remember what he says as I wind up. Remember what the word of God says as he himself has spoken. Verse 12, he said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad when they speak all kind of evil against us. We must rejoice and be exceedingly glad because they are trying to stop us. They are trying to destroy us. They are trying to move us and they cannot succeed. They cannot prevail. If they are not prevailed yesterday, it will be impossible for them to prevail today. It will be impossible. So it says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Our reward is great in heaven in the name of Jesus. I say our reward is great in the name of Jesus Christ. Our reward is great in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's not be afraid of them, my dear brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's not be afraid of them. Let's not be afraid of them. They will all be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. They will all be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's not be afraid. But let us rejoice. And be exceedingly glad. Because our reward is in heaven in the name of Jesus. Our reward is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. That's where our reward is. In heaven. In heaven. The persecution is just for a little while. It's for a while. The pleasures of the world is for a while. It's for a time, a season. The persecution is something that we must go through. We must go through it to enter. To enter, we must go through it. So, so you just want to go Guadeloupe on, on, on the boat, on the ferry. And not face a little, a little turbulence. No, you must face it. You must face the rough water. You must. We must face a little of it. Because we know that our reward is in heaven. In other words, then, we must cross it to go to heaven. You didn't get that? You didn't get that? We must cross it to go to heaven. We must go through it to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Let's give God thanks. For the reward he has for us in the heavens, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your reward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are happy. We are rejoicing today in the name of Jesus Christ. We are rejoicing because we are exceedingly glad, O Lord. Hallelujah. We are rejoicing today, O Lord. We are rejoicing, O Lord. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We are rejoicing, O oh Lord, knowing that our reward is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you, O oh Lord, for your reward in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your reward in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, for putting our enemies to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord, for selecting us, O oh Lord, for choosing us, O oh Lord, for placing us above every nation in the name of Jesus Christ, for putting us above every people of the face of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for promotion in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for elevation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for placing us above and not beneath in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for the many blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. In the womb, in the name of Jesus Christ. In our going out and coming in, in the name of Jesus Christ. In our livestock, in the name of Jesus Christ. In our marriages, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the many blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. In our in our finances, in the name of Jesus Christ. In our careers, in the name of Jesus Christ. In our destiny, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the many blessings. In our spiritual life, in the name of Jesus. In our ministry, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's children say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hand unto Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so good to know that our reward is awaiting us in heaven. It is an honor and a blessing to know that. So to those who are saying, the Old Testament is not for us, simply because they do not want to keep the commandments of God. Quapo, smoke their bumper. Thank you, Jesus. Smoke it and smoke it. Smoke it for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Remember morning devotion? <laughs> Remember our morning devotion at 5 a.m.? All right? Morning devotion at 5 a.m. And um, at 7 p.m., we have um, um, power, 12 power mastery class. All right? At 7 p.m. On Thursday, at 7 p.m., evangelism training. At 7 p.m. on Thursday. Friday, 5 p.m., Father's Heritage. And on Friday, remember Friday, what we have on Friday? Eh? Thank God it's Friday, but we also have something. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. All right. So, we... Go in and honor our Lord on Friday. All right? Now, they did their own on Sunday. Those people. All right? Those people did their thing on Sunday. So, we'll put them to shame on Friday if God spare. All right? On Saturday at 7.30 a.m., as to have our breakfast and prepare for invasion to go preach the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. One gentleman said to me today, but um, I don't see you all in Roseau anymore. What's wrong? I said, no. We are relocated. We're somewhere else. He said, oh, okay. Okay, that's good. All right, so in vision on Saturday, we know where we are heading to. Unless the Holy Spirit directs us. And uh, on Sunday, we'll be back for the alive wood. We are all blessed. In Jesus' name. Are we on YouTube?